record it on this computer. And I, I can actually pause and stop the recording as well. Right. Now then, let's see. Can you all see that? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Very basic, in fact, as you can see. Now then. Now, I don't know why it's not doing that. What music usually looks like? I don't know if there's any musicians among you, but that's a piece of... Um, the Missa Return of Christi Monero by Giovanni Palestrina, who died in 1594. Now, when he first wrote the music out, it wouldn't have looked exactly like that. That's sort of a modern day transcript, obviously. But if you look to his original parchment scrolls, um, you'd probably understand it by that. You'd probably see there's a remarkable similarity in that you've got the... Um, You've got the notes on the stave, which tell you whether it's a high note or a low note. The shape of the note tells you how long to sing it for. If he doesn't want you to sing, he puts marks in there. Everything you need to know is there. And when bell ringers, the, I'm on a bit of a flight of fancy here actually as well, because I haven't done any research. This is just my assumption as to how we got where we did. But if we start doing things like this with ringing, and my computer's working properly now. Anybody tell me what that is? Um, I was expected to be drowned out by the deafening response. Musical notes repeated. It's is rounds, it on, backwards? It's rounds is it on six on a ring of bells in the key of G. Yeah. I thought the round okay. was six, but I could have told you the, uh, the, the notes. <laughs> so what do you think that one is? It backward rounds. No, it's still forward rounds on ring of bells in the key of F. Yeah. Okay. And you can see straight away the nonsense that this is producing because you're fixed with the you're fixed with the key when you get to a ring of bells. You can't you 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 can't have a sheet of music for every single key that they're written in. But it gets more fun because that, for example, is plain hunting on a ring of six bells in the key of G. Right. So you can see the problem in trying to express what it is that we do. <coughs> and then somebody thought. Just gonna, that's better. And then somebody thought, well, actually, we don't need to know the notes because they're a given anyway. The notes are a given. We haven't any choice about that. So why don't we just substitute the notes for numbers? Now, instantly, that starts looking a bit more recognisable. That's rounds on six. But again, if you start mucking around with the numbers, oh, sorry, what they did then, he said, yeah, but hang on a minute. When we ring rounds, we put a little gap in at hand stroke. So rather like the rest in music, we need to put a little gap in. So that's rounds at hand stroke, rounds at back stroke, and a little gap. And the same again, a little gap, same again, little gap, and so on. So I thought, hmm, this isn't, this isn't really going anywhere. Why don't we put them on top of each other like that? We thought, ha-ha, that's quite interesting. So you've got a row of rounds, hand stroke and back stroke. And underneath, you can write another row of rounds at hand stroke and backwards, back, back stroke, and the same again, and so on and so forth. And so it's starting to look a bit tidier. It's starting to look a bit tidier. But again, you start hitting snags as soon as you start going into changes. That's, that's just quite simply the, you know, some, some plain hunting. And you can see the numbers just quickly become a jumble. And you, you, you know, you'd have difficulty trying to learn anything or trying to put across what you're trying to ring in a method there. So starting back at that point, somebody thought, you can see the hand stroke, the hand stroke and the back strokes there, HB, HB, HB. Then somebody thought, well, why don't we break it down to just one row at a time? 
and they produce that. And this gap here is again the, hand, the, the gap before the hand stroke lead. And as you can see, it sort of nudges every other row across and it just doesn't look very tidy. So maybe let's Let's try that. Now that is definitely most definitely something more recognizable with what we're what we're used to seeing. And I've written the hand stroke, backstroke, hand stroke, backstroke. It's not uh, it's not always necessary to include that. We don't tend to. But at least you can see a nice, nice list of, uh, of numbers there. And when you want to start mucking around with these numbers and changing them about, what they noticed. This is the, 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 if you've been ringing rounds here, this is the last round. As you go into changes, you can start changing the numbers around in accordance with the rules that we go by, which I'll come to in a minute. But what was also more interesting is that if you take one number, you can start drawing a line through that number. And so it became apparent, you, you get to the point where you don't need to remember the music so much or the place you're in, it's more a case of the line shows you the path that you're on. Are you still with me so far? Yeah. yeah. Okay, here's a little interesting exercise. You can see I've put a red ring around that number five. What three things can you tell me about that? <coughs> it's the foot in fourth place. Bingo is the first thing. It's in fourth place. Anything else? It's ringing quicker. It's going down to the front. I wasn't so much thinking of that because I was thinking about okay. it as a point in time. Okay. But it's a good, I haven't thought of that. I'll give you that as a fourth one. Well, for a start, what bell number is it? Number five. It's number five. It is bell number five. As Mike says, it's in fourth place. And what's the other thing you can tell me about it? It's following the two. I don't know quite what you were after. Oh, it's ringing a backstroke. A backstroke. Okay. There's always a lot more information we got out of, out of this. So it's really quite precise. This, this format of putting numbers across is quite precise. Now, I thought I'd just take a sideways step just to explain the importance of places. And whenever I'm trying to explain ringing to a non-ringer, I, of, I often use the Harry Potter books as an example because there's seven of those, but I've just done this with six. What I'm showing here, somebody's just paid a fortune at Sotheby's for a, for a priceless set of six volumes of a book. And he's put them on a bookshelf. And there we have volume one, volume two, volume three, four, five, and six. And just to take away any confusion, he's put the numbers on the bookshelf as well. There's a place, there's a first place for book one, a second place for book two, and so on and so forth. And that's technically like ringing rounds. Number one bell is in first place, number two bell is in second place, and so on. But what we like doing when we start ringing changes is we like putting things in a different order. But the thing that's worth putting across, and I've had, I've actually known ringers not realise this, believe it or not, is how many volume threes are there on that second layout? One. <laughs> One. How many volume twos? One. One. There's, there's only what there is still only one of everything. They are just in a different order. It's as simple as that. Okay. Which, which volume has not changed place? Three. Well done, quick. That's more, that's the speed I want with this. <laughs> Number three. And could we actually produce, could we produce that change straight away from that one? No. No. Because? We're well, looking at the four has moved. That's right. It would mean moving the bells too oh, far. And because of the mechanics and the restrictions in terms of how the bell is actually rung, we can't do that. We can, in fact, only change one place at a time. And I don't think there's an example there of any one bell that's just changed one place. I've only just thought of that. 
Okay, so that's places explained. We're all quite clear about that now. Didn't even get a nod. Are we all quite clear about that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. You're a great audience. Place notation, the basics, okay? That is rounds. And as I've just been showing you, we can we can put these numbers in different orders. I have two sugars in mind. <laughs> Okay. We can put these numbers in different order, but we need to have a means of of of, um, of instruction as to how we go about doing it. Okay, so we could start by swapping them all over. Now this X here is really denoting that we're going to cross over number one and two. We're going to swap those over. And likewise, the cross here is going to show that we're going to cross over three and four and the cross there, five and six. OK, now that is denoted. That instruction there is usually denoted by a cross. And that shows the transition from one row to what's coming next. So does anyone want to shout out what that next row is going to be? Two, one, four, three, six, five. Is yeah. the right answer. You just want a brownie point. Okay. Now we could, so we think, well, where do we go from here? Well, we could swap them all over again, but we just end up back to there, which is a bit pointless, really. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to keep Bell at the front where it is and the Bell at the back where it is, and then cross over the middle ones, one and four, and three and six. Okay. And that is shown in the in the column there as one and six. What that means, it's not the bell number, it's the place. That is that rep that one represents first place. So it means keep that bell in first place and keep that bell in six and cross the ones in the middle. Okay. Brenda, can you work out what the row's gonna be? Uh, two, four, one, six, three, five. Excellent. Well done. Brilliant. And we can repeat this process a few more times. Crossing them all. And then just crossing the middle two pairs, etc, etc. And if we carry on doing that, what you end up with is that. So is that like everybody swaps over, then first and sixth place stay, everybody yep. swaps over? Is that how it's going? That's exactly how it goes. That's exactly yes. how it goes. And you'll see that the treble starts at the front. It goes up to the back and he starts, ends up back at the front. The sixth does totally the opposite. It starts at the back, goes to the front, goes up to the back again. And the others all do basically the same. They just start in a different point. And that block is called plain hunting and it's a basis for a, basically everything we do in ringing actually. There's always, there's always chunks of, even in really, really complicated methods, you'll always get two or three rows where there's just plain hunting. Might only be just two or three rows, but, but it, it's always there. And that's what it looks like. And going back to what we were doing earlier, if we start drawing lines through these things then you get these pretty pat patterns. Now you'll notice I've drawn the treble in red and I've drawn the work of the fourth in blue. There'll be a reason for that a little bit later on which we tend to do. Now also in terms of direction you think well yes you can tell people to go to go to lead or go to lie but because it's a movement around we, t we tend to... Uh, sorry what's go to lie? Glad you asked. See Sorry. the treble there? Yeah. That is called lying. Oh. And you, and you see the fourth yeah. there? Two blows at the front, two That's blows. That's leading. Okay. Oh, when, okay. You're the leading. First, when you're the first bell to strike, you're yeah, leading. Lead. And when you're the last one to strike, you're lying. Okay, thank you. I've not heard that. Okay. Thank you. Glad you asked. <laughs> I haven't got a script here, by the way, just so that you know. <laughs> Everybody else probably knows, except me. Yeah, but it's also handy, it's also, in, in terms of terminology that we use, 
if you're leading, you're at the front. Yeah, I'm just making a note of this, actually. Thank you. Okay. And if you're lying, you're at the back. But there's also a bit of extra terminology. Alan? Yeah. If, if, if you got a little bit lost and I was instructing you to go to the back, what would I be more likely to say? Go to the back. Anyone else? Not quite sure. Are go you, out. Are you going up? up Bingo, up. it's like cinema seating. You go up to the back and you go down to the front. It's quite interesting because sometimes in the heat of the moment, because you've got split second, sometimes you've got a, s a split second to give an instructor to someone who's got lost. Sometimes all sorts of language gets blurted out. <laughs> but the general one <laughs> is up to the back. Sometimes it's a case of you don't know what they're going to be doing when they get there. But if you can get them generally in the right place, you stand a better chance of putting them right. Okay. And I swear blind, as, 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 as you will forever now remember that photograph on this presentation. Yeah. You'll be yeah, ringing away so we'll at the back and that photograph will spring to mind. Okay, so how are we doing so far? Yeah. We sometimes say run yeah. out as well, don't we? Yeah. When you want someone to go up to the back. Yeah. I think of it as a theatre, not a, a, a cinema. Yeah. So, same, same thing though. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. That is really useful, actually, because although I've written that down and I've seen it before up to the back, I can never, ever remember it. But the picture is perhaps a bit more at my level. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to take and the exit, are only at the, uh, all, take that one. at the back. <laughs> yeah. That's excellent. That's excellent. So we've done that. We've done the base. We've done the basics. OK. Um, but all we've really done is produced. Can you see how many rows there are in that block, by the way? Just remember that that block forms the basis of 90% of all six bell ringing. And it's 12 rows. You're going to say it's actually 13, but it's not. It's 12 because we've got rounds at the start and we've got rounds at the end. The rounds at the top there is the is the last backstroke of rounds prior to going to ringing this. And these are just some basic numbers to get familiar with. It takes the treble six blows to get to the back and then another six blows to get to the front, which is, is how it, many in total. Is it worth well, mentioning at this point that it, it, whether you're going up to the back or down to the front affects the speed at which you're ringing? can do and I will do but that's more the physical side of ringing than the theory but yes if you look at the treble there when they're ringing rounds they're striking every sixth blow because they'll strike there one two three four five six strike again two three so they'll strike every six blows when you start hunting out there's an extra bell going in there so you'll actually slow down your speed of ringing infinitesimally it's not very much when you think rounds on six takes about two seconds so you're going to shift the speed of your bell by one third of a second but then the reverse is also true when you come off the you do two blows at the back there are six blows between you lying there and lying there but when you come into fifth place you've only you're going to be then striking after five blows then five blows, five blows, five blows, and then back to six. Also, as somebody who started off ringing four bells, um, the, the more bells you have, the less dis difference there seems to be. Yeah. If you're ringing on four bells, you notice it, yeah. What's the difference physically when you're ringing the bell, especially if you're on a heavy one? Yeah, because of course the, the, the speed around typically. It, you know, if you want some really, really basic maths, the speed of ringing rounds on four is about the same as the rounds on six. So if on six you've got to move one place, it's a third of a second. On four bells, it's a half a second. Now you might think, what the heck is a sixth of a second between friends? When you're on a bell rope, you notice it. Yeah. You do notice it. 
and equally when you when you're ringing on 12 if you're ringing the front bells at the birmingham cathedral you don't really feel if you're ringing any faster or slower but then when you start ringing the 11th or the 12th which weighs well one's 20 hundred right the other one's 30 hundred right believe you me making that bell strike um a, a twelfth of a, a, a sixth of a second faster is uh, is quite 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 something and takes quite a skill yeah but that's that's more about the physical side of stuff Phil, I can't help noticing, I, I notice this normally, that we do use a huge amount of jargon. And um, a few moments ago, you talked about coming into. So that's another expression that we use that's when we're talking right, yeah. about coming to the front. And you also said coming off the back, which is a, another expression that we use about yeah. coming down to the front, which is it's just jargon laden, isn't it? It is. It is jargon laden. You're absolutely right. I've, I've used all sorts of the colourful language in the past. I've got, got a phrase book for it. <laughs> I'd make a fortune if I sold it. But the thing is, it, I think a lot of it is back to this heat of the moment. It's what I call falling brick syndrome. You know, if you're on a building site and you see bricks going to land on someone's head, you don't say, oh, by the way, mate, if I was you, I'd look out as a brick going to land on your head. You know, it'd be dead by the time you finish saying that. You just say instantaneously whatever's going to yeah. be the most effective. Um, and that, that's what comes in. Equally, I think if you were to take take all the jargon and think, right, we're going we're gonna to stop using all this, 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 and put a big red line through a load of it, it's, and then perhaps start handing, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, and, you, and you get colloquial differences. I agree. Because I tell you now, there is no shortage of, 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 of ringers, you know, very, very experienced ringers who've gone for a holiday in the West Country, joined the local call change ring, ringing band, which is what they ring predominantly down there. And they blur out these instructions in broad Devon and car one. You can't understand a blind world of it. They just have a totally different phraseology. And it's not just the dialect, and the, it's the actual language. Words, it's yeah. Totally different. And, and then they have a real pop at you because we can't do it. You know, they think they... <laughs> Think you can ring Bristol match, can't ring coal changers, can you? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Anyway, now then, straightforward question. Do you think we could manage to ring a few more than 12 rows on six bells? <clears throat> yeah. I can't yeah. believe the silence there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So how do we produce more changes? That's 11 of the 12 rows that we started with on the previous page. Okay, I'm not going to go through all that again. And if you'll notice, what we've got here is the first hand stroke of the treble lead. Everything up to that point is exactly what we've done before. And if you remember, the pattern was cross one six, cross one six, cross one six, cross one six, so on and so forth, all the way down to here. And what we're going to do now is do something different. We're going to do places in one, two. Okay. Now, when you get this, what it means is that only the bells in first and second place are going to make those places. So don't assume, well, let's do the same with everybody else, because if you were to do that, you'd get a repeated change. So rather like when we had places made in first and sixth place, there was an assumption that everyone else has to cross over. We do exactly the same here. You just mark down one, and in this case, three, and everyone else is going to cross back over. And it looks like that. So whereas we would have got back to one, two, three, four, five, six, we've actually got one, three, five, two, six, four. And as you can see as well, interestingly here, if you look at the fourth, which I've put the line in for, you can see it does this interesting little kink here. Helen, do you know what that kink is called? No. It's a word you'll hear a lot of. It's a dodge. It's a bit like a do -si do in country dancing. Okay. Can you explain that, please? Um, yes, but I'll do that a little bit later on the page. Okay. Thank you. Because you'll, you'll, you'll see why when we get to it. So we think, oh, that's interesting, because we've, we've, run, we've run 12 changes, and we've suddenly got to a different row here. What do we do next? Well, the obvious thing is, well, let's just try repeating the whole exercise and see what happens. So if we do that, we end up with one, four, six, three, one, five, six, three, four, two. The rest of that is just plain hunting exactly as it was in the first row. Okay. Do you think we could do this a few more times? Yeah. 
So, sorry, um, that, you know that second row you've just put up, starting one, three, five, two, six, four. Yeah. So you've crossed the next row. Yeah. And then what is, are you doing a one and a six there? That's right. That the, the work there is exactly repeat of that. So this line of oh, okay. instructions here, you could put yeah. it down the side there and there and there and there. So, so what's happened to this one, two? Was that just an example you were just showing us then? or? No, if you look at them all, at the end, oh, the end here, that is oh, what yeah, the see. Oh, is right, okay. the last okay. row yeah. of each of these. Okay. Okay, that's the thing. It's a repeated thing. But have you noticed the one bell? Seeing, seeing as you've asked that, have you noticed the one bell that's always back in the same place? I mean, from where, where it started, you If mean? you look at all those bottom rows. Yeah. There's one, one bell that's always what? in the same place. Which one is it? <coughs> is it one? It's number one. It's the treble. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember me saying earlier why we use a, a red line for the treble and a blue line for everyone else? Because it leads, is it? Because that's the bell leading. Well, basic, almost. But I basically said I'll come. I'll come on to why. And the reason is and this: there's, there's some really important stuff. Just looking at this, there's some really important stuff here. Yeah. Um, in fact, I tell you what. Let's just finish the slide off. Right. You've now got a collection of lines there. Yeah. Okay. If you look at the fourth it does a particular path of work in that one lead. And then when it goes into the next lead here, and by the way, I'm again, terminology, these 12 rows are each called a lead. Now this is where it get, does get confusing because the fourth there is leading, mm -hmm. as in it's yeah. at the front. The yeah. block of work from the treble being at the front to the treble being at the front again, at the backstroke, is also called a lead. Right. It's a block of work, but it denotes the fact the trebles got back to where they started and everyone else is in a different order. And that's what a lead is. Okay. But the fourth, where's the treble does a repeated work all the time. Yeah. Everyone else does something different. So as the fourth moves through, he's going to do a different piece of work in that lead. Mm -hmm. He's doing a different piece of work in that lead and so on and so forth. But by the time he's done it, by the time there's five blocks or five leads, look what you've come back to. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now, if you can try and get your head around this, these are some of the questions I fire at people when I'm running ringing and they go a bit wrong or in other theory sessions, and I say things like, well, how many rows are there in the lead of plain minor? This is called plain minor. Minor means it's on six bells. Plain means the treble's just hunting up to the back and down to the front. And it's basically that block of plain hunting. And there's 12 rows. And you'll find loads of methods based on this. We'll come to some of them a bit later on. So that's, that's after the uh, start, it's 12 rows. Is that what you're saying? That's right, yeah. Okay, 12 rows. But Maybe. also, um, yeah. when, you, when you get to the lead end, it affects five of the six bells. The treble isn't affected. It affects bells two, three, four, five, and six. So you have to do five things for them to get back to the start. Yeah. And in actual, so I'm just trying to move the screen around so I can see what's coming up. The next, the next shot will probably help. And is it worth making the point at this point that um, each bell is in fact doing exactly the same thing, just in a different That's order? That's exactly why I've just got this. Right, next sorry. Point. No, don't yeah. apologise, please. <laughs> I'd much rather have the audience participation. I'm not perfect <laughs> and it just, people learn better when they're in conversations if they're just sitting there listening all the time. So please, do, please do interrupt. What I've, what I've done now, you can see this, this double line here, the red line and the blue line. Okay. All I've yeah. done basically, Helen, is I've taken yeah. out all the numbers. Yeah. I did okay. try and find a way to do it on PowerPoint and it's not easy. So I thought, blow that. 
And all I've done, imagine you now rub out all the, the numbers yeah. and you're left with those lines. If you string the lines together, that's what you get. Right, okay. Okay, you're looking ever so worried and I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely with, I'll be honest, I am, I am a bit lost about this blue line and how, how the four, bell four is leading. That's what I'm, I can see the pattern for the red. I'm just not clear the, of the point. Well, with the, don't, the, don't worry about trying to learn it. I'm just trying to talk about how we get to it. Yeah. Okay. There are various ways of learning these methods. And also if I was teaching someone to ring, I wouldn't start on this method either. This is purely about how methods are constructed. Yeah. Okay. okay. But if you just, if I just interrupt, perhaps it would help to know that, uh, that your fourth bell is not the start of your blue line there. Again, I was just going to show that as I was moving over here, if you look at what the fourth did in that first lead, when I just had that on the page. Yeah. That's what it's doing there. That's the same line just squashed up a bit. It goes straight down to a lead. It goes straight out to a back and it does a dodge. You can see a dodge oh, yeah. more clearly yeah. like that. Can you see how that's basically like, he just does a, comes forward, does a step back and then carries on again. Right, okay. Which, so I, I understand what you're saying there. So on the, with, the, with the numbers in, where is the dodge there? So I can actually see. The, see that's the, the dodge there. One three one five two six four. Then it goes into uh, the, this place. Yeah, yeah. Oh, think, I see. I see. Yeah. Think okay. of the think of the dodge actually as that one little bit. People tend to think yeah. of dodges as three or four rows. It's not. Up until that point, there they're still plain hunting. Is it the always dodge the fourth? Is that one yeah. step back? And is it always the fourth place that does the dodging then? Well, that's an interesting thing you get onto there. Um. In this instance, for this particular method, no, because if you look at the second, that's also doing the same thing. Oh, yes, yes. And in fact, what the second is doing there, <laughs> the fourth is doing here. Sorry, yeah. the other way around there. See the fourth come in? Yeah. Into third do. place and then dodging back out yeah. to fourth. Yes. Also, if you compare it with the square dancing or whatever it is, if yep. you do -si do you have to do -si do with somebody. So they've got to do -si do with you in the opposite direction that you do -si do If you move forwards uh, and then backwards, they have to move backwards and then forwards. Otherwise, it won't work. I'm loving this talk because that's just what I was going to say. Mike, you're great. Thanks ever so much for that. That's good. And Helen's heard it many times when us morons in Harborn uh, and Steve... Um, will scream at the top of his voice, Mike, you're dodging with the four, because I have to dodge with somebody. And then I look all embarrassed and it all goes wrong and it stands. Is that when you're well, sixth place then, Mike? Is that your no, it, it depends. It depends on what you're ringing. But, you know, no, what no, like with this one here. So if you were dodging with the fourth, you'd be sixth place, wouldn't you? Sixth bell. No, so, it's and, not, you're starting on the first to... column, mm. I, if the four and the six dodge at the back, but if it's got no blue line through it, but if you move forward, you'll see that the bell in third and fourth also dodge with each other. Is it worth just saying to Helen that we just need to be a bit careful about not mixing up the bell number with the yeah. place? Place, yeah. yeah. Forget, the, forget bell numbers. Yeah, so in, okay. in this first example, in the first column, um, we've, got, we've got the fourth has got the blue line through it. And um, in the last two rows of that um, column, or that lead end, um, the, the fourth bell is in sixth place, sixth place, then he moves into fifth place, and the dodge is when he moves back into sixth place. place. Yeah. So the fourth is actually in sixth place. And that, that is quite, that in itself is quite complicated to understand sometimes that, yeah. you know, we're, we're using numbers for both the bell number and the place number, but they are separate yeah. things. Yeah. What, what, what might help, what might help actually, if you just put a bit of terminology onto this, and I haven't, I haven't really spoken about the completed blue line here, but in much the same way we like to put instructions 
onto things. And I'll, you, I'll just go back to this dodge here as an example. When we describe the dodge, it's one thing saying dodge, but because dodges happen all over the place, you have to be a bit more specific as to where it is, particularly when you start reading on higher numbers. Okay, now then, you remember we were talking about places earlier, weren't we? Remember the books on the shelf? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, the fourth there is moving between fifth and sixth place. Yeah. So it is a five, six dodge. Yeah. Okay. But as Mike rightly said, you can't dodge on your own. You have to have a dodging partner. Take your partners for the next dodge, as it were. Okay. So somebody else is also going to be doing a five, six dodge at this particular point in time. As it happens at exactly the same point in time, two bells are dodging in three, four as well, but you don't need to know about them. Just forget them for the moment. So having told someone to do a, th a five, six dodge, we need a bit more information on there because otherwise you'll have two people just trying to dodge in five, six. Okay. Do you remember how we were talking about going up to the back and coming down to the front? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, the fourth here, in this example, he's done his lying at the back and he's just about to start his journey down to the front. Yeah. Notice I use the word down. Yeah. Okay. And he has to dodge. So that down comes into the dodge instruction. So that dodge, as you see it there, is a five, six down dodge. Yes. Because okay. he's going down, he's going down to the front and he's uh, dodging but he's five. Dodging dodge six. on the way, yeah. Okay, Yeah. excellent. What do you think the other dodge might be called that's also in 5-6? What, what there you mean? Um, yeah, which is what the sixth is doing round him. Oh, he, he's dodging um, oh. up, up to the, is he dodging up? He's going yep. up to, to six and then... So the, do so the dodge is yeah, called going, what? Dodging up, is he? Yeah, dodging. it's an up dodge. It's called a five six up. Oh, okay. And although yeah, you see the sixth doing it there, yeah. you see the fourth doing it the next oh, thing. Yeah. Yes, and the fourth is there. That's he hasn't an got up to the back yet, you see. He uh, has to do the dodge before he's finished his journey to the back. Yes. So the six was dodging up to the fifth, wasn't he? Yeah. The sixth spell was going up. Dodging up to fifth place. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, having taken all those numbers out, if we mm -hmm. join up all those blue lines, you get this here. Okay. And there's, uh, yeah. And that is the complete work. A bit like the complete works of Shakespeare. This is the complete work. This is a particular method called plain Bob Minor. You've probably heard it talked about. But the thing I can't stress enough is don't start learning numbers. You, and as I say, for this exercise today, you can forget numbers anyway, because it's immaterial. I'm trying to drum home places all the time. That's what matters. It's like when you're, it's like when you're going to see your great aunt Gladys. The car you're driving in is immaterial. The roads you go down are what matter. And it's the same with ringing. What bell number you've got is in your hand is totally immaterial. Because you see these numbers down the side here, two, four, six, five, three. Yeah. If somebody says, Helen, can you ring playing Bob Minor? Can you ring the second? Yeah. That's where you'd start. Yeah. And once you've learned the method, you'll weave your way down through this line and you get back to the start again. Yes, there. I can see that. Yeah, I can see how that's gone. But suppose somebody says, well, can you ring the fifth, please? Yeah. You see that number five? Yeah. That's where you start. So right, okay. there you go. You're doing exactly the same work the second did. And when you get to there, you go round back to the top and you keep coming down here until you get back to where you start. Yeah, so Even I'm just the looking five at the bells are doing all the same work. So the five, yeah, okay. They're just okay. all starting in a different place. Now, the other thing I find a lot of ringers have had a difficulty getting a concept of you see that dodge there in five, six down? Yes, that's going down to the front, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That dodge is also happening at exactly the same time. So that point in time there is the same point in time there. Yeah. But that'll be one bell doing the down dodge, and that'll be another bell doing the up dodge. 
Yeah. Up in to the fact, back. I can show that very nicely. Whoops, these are, this is just a description of the Dodgers, by the way. I should try and keep a better on the second screen. Tell me what's coming up. That's how we describe what's going on. So we've explained up and down Dodgers now and where they are. So that's the fourth belt dodging with the third going down. No, so, it's no, in three, no, no. four places. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. That's okay, I, 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 I Right, okay. You'll thank me for this one day, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> it's places because that's what matters. Yeah. Again, think back to the journey to go and see Great Aunt Gladys. Yeah. You need to go down the A46. The fact, you know, no, you don't need to drive a blue Ford Mondeo. That, that's irrelevant. It's not going to help you one bit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. We always talk about places, okay? But if I just show you the next thing, that is what we call a grid. That might look a little bit complicated, but all we've done here, you see where I wrote out all these five leads here? <coughs> you see the five leads I wrote out here on the, oh, yeah, on the yeah. left? Yeah? yeah. What I could have done is having put a line through the fourth, for example, which you can see there. And there's that, again, familiar five, six down dodge at the end. I then took my blue pencil and drew a line through the second, which is the line you get there. Yeah. And then after that, I did the third, the fourth, and so on and so forth. And again, the line for the treble is in red. So what I've basically done here is written all the blue lines out on that lead that showed on the far left. So that is now just a mash of blue lines. And then I've taken all the numbers away and it looks like that. And whereas I was saying here about that five, six down dodge being the same point in time as the five, six up dodge, you can see it very clearly there. You can see the two bells dodging. You yeah. can see them one way over, then they cross back, which is the plane hunting bit, and then they have to dodge. So they cross back again. Has that helped? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I am getting it just slowly. I'm just looking back to the, matching that back to your uh, one with the numbers in so I can understand it a bit better. Sandy's looking anxious because she needs, she needs to nip off at 11 o'clock. <laughs> okay, so any questions so far, Helen? No, no, thank you. No. Are you still okay with this? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're now going to just look at how place notation can sometimes be written. Now we've gone back to this. This is the same first lead of playing Bob Minor that we were showing earlier. With a cross one six, cross one six, cross one six. And you'll notice I've now left a gap there. Mm -hmm. Do you know why that is, Margaret? Because uh, you're just repeating the same things. Not quite repeating, you're absolutely on the right lines though. Because of symmetry in ringing, when you get to this halfway point, and can everybody shout out, by the way, at the bottom here, when you get to the end of the lead, it's called the lead end. When you get to the halfway point there, do we all know what that's called? The half lead. Yep. The half lead. Get that into your head. It's in, it isn't always important in methods, and certainly in plain bubble wouldn't go nuts about it, but believe you me, there's an awful lot of methods where knowing where the half lead is, is valuable. Okay, so that's the half lead. But you always get symmetry. So whatever you did getting down to this point here, you do the reverse of it carrying on down. And the only difference being when you get to this last row, the last row is an exception. Okay, you have a separate instruction for that. So to get these rows here, you don't actually need to write out the entire list for the place notation. You just need to write out what half of it is. And then to get the rest, you then just go back up the line. So having got to one six, for the instructions for here, it would be cross one six, cross one six, cross, which would get you to one three two five four six. Okay? 
And then having got that, you then would have a separate instruction for the lead end, which is one, two. And that would typically be written out like that. If you were to look up, if you were to look at place notation for methods on Google or whatever, whatever your reference point is, that is typically what it would look like. Okay. So what does the LE denote? Lead, lead end. end. But you don't always have the luxury of it being shown as that. You just have to assume that if there's a comma. You just have to assume. Well, you can do some working out, actually. Because the one thing you can check, let's go, let's go to the basics again. I was talking earlier about a plain lead of a minor method. How many rows in a lead end? 12. 12, uh -huh. right. But if you're going to have just the place notation for half of those, how many bits of information are you going to have for that? Six. Six. Okay, because you only need to go halfway. And you've got that there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then you get that extra bit of information. The lead end is a one, two lead end. And it's called, that's called a seconds place lead end. Okay. But people do, there's, again, like you were saying about the jargon earlier, Sam, there's so much flipping jargon in bell ringing. Sometimes people are a little bit lazy. And they actually write it out like that. Which I think you'll agree looks something different to the line above, but they are exactly the same. You just have to do a little bit more work for the second one. How many bits of information was I saying you would need for this? Six. Six, thank you. Well, you've got six bits of information there. Cross, one, cross, one, yeah. cross, one. And the reason they haven't mentioned the six is because they don't need to. Yeah. There's an assumption that if the bell at the front is making first or is staying in first place, you cross over whatever you can and whatever's left at the end stays there. Okay, yeah. unless it says otherwise, just assume that if you get a one and the place notation will show this as it works out, that there's, a, there's going to be a sixth place made. So because it's going to happen anyway, save the, pe save the ink in your pen and don't bother with it. But you have to be told with that really abbreviated form, you have to be told it's minor, don't you? Whereas you would, if well, you, you would know that if you were looking for a method, six. Mike, wouldn't you? If you think, well, yeah, I'm, okay. going to look at the, I'm going to look at the place notation for Duxford Minor, you'll know straight away, you know, you're looking for six bits yeah. of information plus a seventh for the lead end, which is also yeah. where the comma comes in. You see, there's a, that comma just gives you a break and it just says one, two. And you can work it out that that means one, two, because up to there, you've got the six bits of information to get you to your half lead. Yeah. So... That one, two, must think, oh, that's the lead. That's obviously the lead end bit. Now, how's this for a bit of guesswork? And this surprised me. How many other ways do you think you could write out the place notation for that method? Have think. a guess, because you may as well. <laughs> Somebody shout Some out. ridiculous number. Um, uh, 24. You, you're, you're sort of thinking right, actually. It's not 24. But it's 10 plus. It was okay. more than 10. Okay. Well, you I really thought, well, I don't to have a generic language. Like all of here, but I did Google it. There's a, whole page of There's a whole page on Wikipedia, whatever it is, about place notation. It goes into all the variations. Of, and, I, and I said, you know, and I put in Bob Miner as an example. And it said, there's, you know, there's over 10 other ways of doing it. So that's, that's 12 straight away. But it's 12 plus ways. So your guess wasn't actually bad, Mike. Uh, and also, if, if, sorry, I was thinking if you t uh, if um, you uh, use able and you put in a method, it doesn't recognise from the name. Yeah. Um, out of all the possible ways of putting in the place notation, there's only one that it, it will accept. Um, and sometimes it, it needs uh, stops after each uh, um, after the uh, numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's oh. It's a nightmare. Yeah, it, 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 it is and it isn't because, again, we, the, the, the great thing, I mean, once, you, once you've sussed out what format it needs it in, um, 
then yes, I suppose that, that is the difficulty with computer programs. But you see, this is also why I like people to get back to a bit of pen and paper, because that is, you know, mid days ago when somebody invited you an appeal and it was some new method, they'd give you the place notation over the phone. They wouldn't, they wouldn't give you the, um, they wouldn't give you the blue line, they give you the place notation, you worked it out yourself. But you learned the method better as a result of it. And this is one of the things yeah. I want to try and advocate. Um, I, I, I'm not against people using the internet. I'm just against people just getting a blue line and learning it. Because you don't learn the method, you learn the blue line. If you actually get your place notation and work it out, whether you use a computer to do that or not, I'm not too bothered. But if you sit down with a pen and paper or a computer and work it out, believe you me, you'll know that method a lot better than if you just studied a blue line for five minutes. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. So again, one, once you get given a string of numbers, which is a place notation, you might need to work it out. You know, okay, I'm looking for a six bell method. I've got six bits of information. I've got a seventh bit for the lead end. And if you've got that, you should be able to then do something. I thought it's just worth touching on what to do with five bell methods, because we do have a, a slightly awkward problem here in that doing exactly the same number swapping with five, because it's an odd, number you're always going to get one place only because you can't cross over pairs of bells when you've got five you can cross over pairs of bells when you've got four and six but it doesn't work with five you're always going to have one left over in every row okay so i've shown that here by putting cross five and what it means is that you cross all the pairs of bells and the one in fifth place stays where it is and be very careful to say places for Helen's benefit here because obviously at the start the fifth is in fifth place um, and then for the next row it says one cross so the bell in first place stays and everyone else crosses and because it's a five bell method how many pieces of information are we looking for for the place notation Ten. you're ten in total but we can half yeah. that because you only need the half lead so we've got one, two, three, four, five. So let me just think of that. Five bell method, I need five bits of information. Ten bell method, I need ten bits of information. And so on and so forth. And also notice as well, when you get to the lead end there, notice it says one, two, five. Because the first is making a place, the bell in sixth place is making a place, and the bell in fifth place is making a place. Okay. And bells. Well, in the same way that um, when we were looking at Bob Minor, we you gave us the example of X1, 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 mm -hmm. because it's implied that yeah. the six, the bell in sixth place has got to stay there. Yeah. Is the same true here with doubles that you might not get that five in the place notation? Yes, you will get that five, because if you don't put the five, where do you cross? Do you, do you cross the bells in two, three, four, five, or do you cross the bells in one, two, three, four? Oh, right. Okay. You need to yeah. have that place. Right, but, but, but it could for be the three. lead end, you, you, could, you, you, you could have a place made in thirds and you cross one, two, yeah, and four, five. I get that. So, but, but at the lead end, yeah. would, would they always give you the five there? Because if yes, got, because again, if you don't put the five, right, you could have the swap. You could have back. one, two, three and cross four, yeah, five. Yeah, okay. So yeah. it's, it's yep, yep, generally yep. regarded. But this is where it gets fun with five because I've done the same sort of exercise here that I did on six. Yeah. Now that really is actually quite a meaningless string of numbers. Could you make out what that place notation is from that line I've just put in? No. Well, it's the same as what you've written down on the left-hand side, isn't it? Yeah, but it? where are the breaks? You don't know where the breaks are, no. So should that have commas in between each Well, the first thing I'm going to tell you, watch this. We don't do that. <laughs> Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Try and be a bit more helpful than that. And Sand was actually right. Don't use commas, we use dots. Use a full stop. Right, okay. So that full, that full spot, full stop, okay, signifies the move from one row to the next. So you've got the cross five there, and then you put a, a full stop to go to the next row. One, five, stop, cross five, and so on and so forth. And it says lead end one, two, five. But also, in the same way, 
that with over here with Bob Minor, we put in one and six and there was an assumption that everyone else just crossed. You don't bother with, don't, putting, don't bother putting the cross in. You can do the same with this. Actually, you can take the crosses out. You don't need them. You just know that you start by putting a bell in fifth place and there's an assumption that everyone else crosses over. So it just takes yeah. out all the crosses and that simplifies that. But you know that you're after five bits of information. One, two, three, four, five, there they are. And then your extra bit for the lead end, one, two, five. Any questions? No, thank you. Can I also say, Helen, just for your reassurance, there is not an expectation that you will learn all this today or remember any of it. No, but, you're absolutely right. But I am getting to understand it a little. I mean, you yeah. know, tiny well, bit. What it's worth, I've got better. an exercise coming up. And also, for those who want to, I've got some exercise <laughs> sheets, which I'll email out afterwards. They're not oh, yes, please. Yes, they're please. not compulsory. They're the sort of thing you might sit down and a bit like a methoduco that Mara has been doing. But there, you can you can sit down with a coffee. You can take it to Harborn practice if you want and have a chat. Say, oh, I've tried working this out. How am I doing? But you'll get, so they're not difficult. You'll get such a terrific sense of achievement. And the would other thing, all... I, 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 would, I would honestly encourage anyone to do this. Just get a pen and paper, Google a method, get the place notation, and just try it. You know, you don't need any specific instructions. Mm -hmm. Would you uh, also send the link to this um, presentation, please? Because you're recording it. Yeah, you sure. Think? Yeah, no problem at all. Thank you. Well, can I um, ask a couple of questions? But I don't, yeah. I don't know what else you're going to say. So I might be jumping the gun. Is no, now. that's OK. OK, so um, and I don't want to blow Helen's mind in particular, but um, um, when we um, Oh, hang on, I think you've answered that one. What, what if we've got a method that's on more than 10 bells? I've got it in my mind that we might use E for the for 11th place. But what, how do we express? Because if you put um, well, 10 would be OK because you because there's no naught placed bell. But what if you've got if you were trying to put 11 into this, mm -hmm. you know, somebody lies in 11th place, mm -hmm. um, might that get too many ones gets a bit messy. So no, well, am I don't. right you, that you use? You're absolutely, you're absolutely right. We use OET for 10, 11, 12. OET. Right. OK. And then on the odd occasion you want to do it on 16 bells. Um, they just they just use um, A, B, C, D. So oh, A okay. is the 13th, B is the 14th. And what but, about um, how, I, I mean, I'd be, I'd be interested in a worksheet on this, but how do we express something like Stedman then? Um, I'm just trying to get my head around this. You because, can do it exactly the same way. But you've yeah. not got lead ends in quite the same way, have you? Because you've got the quick No, you sixes. have sixes. You have rows of six. But how would you... I yeah I think I need I'd like to I might try and look at that then place notation yeah. of that see how that's going to work. And don't forget it starts halfway through a six as well. But you can produce the rows by exactly the same process. Okay. One minute, microwave. Yeah. That helps. Yeah, it has yeah. helped because I can I can absolutely see how you would show it in the same way. Yeah, you can do, but, but in terms of showing you know getting the line for the method, you can always do it through place notation. You know, and yes, by all means, you know, I don't you know, dig out the place notation. It's no doubt that the line's going to pop up as well, but you've got something to check it against when you've worked out your own. Yeah. Line. And but where's a good place to search for place notation then? Because, I mean, if I look in my, um, my very old-fashioned diagrams book, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's no place notation in there. I know, you terrible. used to see place notation in, in Ringing World um, diaries, which I don't have yeah. one these days I know. so where's a good place to find place notation you Go mentioned google. just googling it but just google yeah if you go onto vismeth i tend to use vismeth a lot and most because they, they give you the options as to how you want the method presented but they've oh, yeah. virtually always got the blue got, got the place notation there even if okay. you don't ask for it if you just put the method in it'll still throw it up with the place notation so you could for example take a method you know perfectly well yeah get the place notation and you'll suddenly start seeing why things happen you know as soon as you see a play, mm -hmm. say for example, as soon as you see a plain minor method, you notice there's loads of thirds being made. What do you think that tells you? Plain minor method. Well, it sounds like grandson. 
No, no. Play. Imagine a there's no surge. No, in a in a minor method, if there's a load of load of thirds being made, it tells you there's dodging in one two. Oh, I see what you're saying. Because as soon as you put a bell in thirds, it, it forces the bells in one two to dodge, and the reverse is true. If you see lots of fourths being made, it tells you there's loads of dodging in five six. Um, yeah. Thinking about the uh, where to get some of the um, uh, place notation, uh, one thing that Simon Linford told me, and I use it for handbell ringing, is um, uh, method database. That's methods.ringing.org slash forward slash, and that um, and if you t and that's uh, you know allows you to uh, print out the blue lines, but it always gives you the uh, place notation as well. And that's quite oh, good. Great. Thank you. Even very weird methods. Uh, forward mine was the last one I looked up. And I got it. 34x34.0. Uh, forward minor. Thank you. There you go. But I want, I want to encourage a lot more people to, to, to be doing this now in future. I found this a really great reminder. I mean, I learned about this as a teenager, a young teenager, and yeah. I'm not telling you how long ago that was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so don't worry, your secret's safe with me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't, I, so I've yeah, it's really great to revisit this, and I think I will yeah. have a little bit of a play because I think it's, it's much more likely to, that, actually, to yeah. stick in my mind if I do a worksheet or two. So if you share that, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, so. And I think I've just got one more example. That's another example of what 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 could be done. Okay. There's an, there's an assumption in, and again I got that that last row you see there. Although it only says one, two, it doesn't stipulate the fifth. Again, I did that that came off Google. So it just goes to show that actually you could interpret that one of two ways. But I, th I think I'm right in saying, if you tried making third, that's right, there's always an assumption, unless it says otherwise, it's always the farthest place that you're going to make. So you could say, well, is it three or five? Well, it's the, like, you know, it's like the six at the back. Just assume it's going to be the farthest. But you may well find, actually, if you tried writing that method out with one, two, three at the lead end, it doesn't actually work. There's also that as a fallback. Here's just some other examples for you of place notation of what they could look like. I don't know what those methods are. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think that last one is London Surprise Minor. And you have to have the dots in there because although it's a minor method, it's too easy to think minor methods are always across a pair of numbers, cross pair of numbers, cross pair of numbers. They're not. With London, you can make a pair of places and then in the next row, make another pair of places, which is what makes London a particularly nasty method. You end up with wrong hunting in it. Helen, I'll tell you this just, just uh, it doesn't matter if you don't remember this. Um, all this method ringing we've been talking about so far is based on what's called right hunting. Now, right hunting means that when you get down to lead, when you get to lead eventually, your lead will always be a hand stroke followed by a backstroke. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And everything you do once you've led is, is fixed because of that. Okay. It also means when you get to the back, when you light the back, you'll lie for a hand stroke and a backstroke. Yeah. Okay. You get methods like London where, for example, when you get to lead, it will be a backstroke followed by a hand stroke. Okay. Mm -hmm. It feels really funny because it goes against the grain of what your body feels like when it's yeah. doing right yeah. hunting. And it's like trying to explain cricket to a foreigner. It totally goes against the grain. <laughs> now you say right hunting. I mean, I'm just looking at the, what you're talking about and I've just done a little bit of the basic plane hunting with Claire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's right hunting a different thing then. So that is right hunting. Yeah. Oh, so should now, when, right. you've so done your plane, hunting, when, yeah, yeah. when you've done your plane hunting, which bell have you rung for it? Uh, the first. I usually lead. Okay. Well, if you were going to do wrong hunting, yeah. don't try this. Don't try this. But when you do wrong hunting, if Claire says to you, right, ring the treble, we're going to do some wrong hunting. When the conductor says go wrong hunting, the first thing you will do is a hand stroke lead. 
and mm. then you'll go into second place at backstroke. And the bell that will turn you from lead, it's normally the second, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. When you do yes. right hunting on the treadmill, yes. the second yes. takes you from yes. lead. Well, oh, if yes. you do it, it won't, it'll be the third. Because the second's going out to the back with you. <laughs> yes. Well, the, well the, the, yeah, I, I mean... As I say, don't, don't get stressed about it. There's a, mm. there, is, there is a huge number of ringers who never, ever get to ring wrong hunt methods, so don't worry about it. No. Just, but just know <laughs> just, what it is. Yeah. So when you're saying right hunt, you're talking plain hunt. These are all right hunt methods, yeah. And came, yeah. you hear methods like Cambridge Minor and stuff like that. They're all very complex methods, but they're still all right hunting yeah. methods. Because like Claire always talks about plain hunt. So yeah. That's... As so long as I know we're talking about the same thing, I understand. Yeah, what if you're someone does, if no, no one's ever going to say catch hole for plain hunt and mean wrong hunting, if they want you to do any wrong hunting, they will say wrong hunting. Okay. Okay, but it's just so that you know what it's. Oh, what's wrong? And if you want to get and get a pen and paper and write it out, it comes round. It's just that it's all backwards. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll just stick with plain hunting for now. <laughs> right. Now for a bit of fun and games. We're going to put this into practice. I will just say, by the way, it's about 20 past 11. Is everyone happy to keep going? Yeah. Um, what time are you anticipating that you'll finish? Well, I'd thought probably about 11, 11.30, but it might go on a bit. I mean, it's, there's not a fat lot left to do, to be honest. Yeah, we'll get this exercise time, yeah. out of the way. Yeah. I could probably fly through what's left. It's more just sort of loose chat and stuff like that. I'll stay so as that, long as that's, I can. That's, so. that's a place notation I've picked out from somewhere, okay? What's the first thing we want to do with that? Crossover, bells crossing, and first. I mean, yeah, you're you're straight to the right idea, but just to make life easier, let's do that. Yeah. Okay, so and then we'll stick some rounds at the top like that. Yeah. Are you all still with me so far? Yeah. Okay. So, anyone want to shout out what the first row will be? Two, one, four, three, six, five. Yeah. Okay. This is all straightforward from what we were doing earlier. Anyone want to shout the next row? Two, four, one, six, three, five. Bingo. And the next one? Four, two, six, one, five, three. I'll go with that. Now, this is a bit different. Three, six. Uh, so, who's going to tell me the bells which you're going to cross over? Uh, first and second yeah, place. Yeah, four, two, yeah. Yeah, and four and f fifth place, fourth, fourth and fifth, fifth place. place going to cross over. And six and three are going to stay where they are. There you go. Then we're going to cross them. Alan, do you want to shout the next row again? Four, two, five, six, three, one. Sounds about right. Brenda, you still with us? Yes, yeah. Do you want to shout the last row out? Um, two, four, six, five, three, one. Excellent. And that conveniently brings us to what's it called? St. Clement's. Half lead. The half oh. lead, thank you. The half lead. Right, okay, so we've got that far. Now then, what do we need to do to get the bottom half? Repeat. 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 Another word. Uh, backwards. Backwards, that's the fella. So if we then quickly scribble down the remaining, that is just the what is above reverse. And I'll save you shouting all the numbers. Okay, there's one last bit of information we need to put in there now, isn't there? The lead end. The lead end, which is one six. Margaret, do you want to shout out what it is? Uh, so it'd be one, three, four, six, two, five. Correct. And that's the lead end. Simple. How easy was that? It's easy when you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just about being methodical, that's all it is. Once you've done a few of these. Okay, and once you've got that, that's, that's the same block again. Can I, can I ask a question, Phil? Of course you can. Right. Are you, in fact, saying that it would be easier to learn the place notation rather than the blue line? Yes no. 
I mean, there are, I've known people who, who don't learn blue lines. They just ring everything by place notation. And in particular, they tend to be handbell ringers and tower bell ringers. And they say it makes it easier because when you're ringing handbells, you don't learn blue lines anyway. It's too complicated. You just learn by place notation. So if you can ring tower bells the same way, it, makes, it just makes life easier. Okay. Now, having got that block, I've just drawn in, I've just drawn in the blue line for, the, for, for sixth place bell. And if you keep on doing that and take all the numbers out, tell me, tell me one thing we're going to find out on the front. Remember I was saying about making thirds. What's going to happen on the front in this method? A lot of uh, one, two dodging. See them? <coughs> all I've done there with that block, I've, I've, filled this, I've filled this grid with all the blue lines and the red line for the treble. Then I've taken the numbers away and I've got that. And as you can see, in fact, I cut and pasted that off the internet and it just so happened it had the place notation already in. And can you see, even for the lead end, it just says six. And from that, you can then break that out and produce the complete blue line, which looks like that. Now, Helen, yeah. you know we were saying about how when you dodge, you have to dodge with somebody. Yeah. What can you tell me about all that fancy stuff in, in one, two places on, in that blue line? Uh, what, the one you've just put on? Yeah. Well, hang on. Well, I, I was looking back to the, the one before where you've put the blue line where we've got um, the uh, pla uh, place numbers in. Mm -hmm. And I thought that it was the six bell in third place was dodging, mm -hmm. going yeah. down. That's what I thought, but obviously yeah. that it's not the case, is it? Well, it well it is. It is dodging. You can see. You see that dodge there. That that's the, that's what I thought. Yeah. Well, that's it there. Oh, I thought Mike said one and two. Well, there's that as well. Oh. It's oh, all I see. Here, yes. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I was very re relaying that one back to the one with the place um, numbers in. Yeah. So you that get, is you, a dodge, but, isn't it? There. And you get you get the dodges there. If you remember, yeah. like the previous. Yes. Yeah, because the bell made seconds over the treble. Because the bell made seconds over the treble, we created dodges in three, four, and five, six places. Yes. Well, the reverse happens here. Because the bell makes fifths in front of the treble, everyone here has to cross. Yes. But can you see that triple dodge there? Yes. And can, yes. You, can, you, can you guess what's happening at the same time as that, in the same place? Well, that, that's dodging, isn't it? It's dodging yeah. with one and two. Yeah, but can you see uh, how that three-pull dodge there will lock horns with that one? Oh, at the same time? Yeah, when you can oh, touch okay. what that one, is there. Yeah, one, and it's dodging in the opposite direction, isn't that's it? That's it. So the two yeah. Yeah. is doing, a, and it's the three dodges, so it's called a triple dodge. Doing three dodges before he goes yeah. out to the back. So when the four comes in, it must do three dodges the other way. As it goes... And I yeah. might be stating oh, the obvious, but I once did come across a learner who was trying to do a triple dodge in a method, okay? And they did the first dodge perfectly and then tried to find someone else to do the second dodge with. It's impossible. Once you start dodging with somebody, you're stuck for life until such okay. time the dodging ends, however long it is. Oh, okay. That's good. That's worth knowing. Thank you. Yeah. It's just yeah. physically impossible to do it any other way. Okay? Yeah. But that's just an example of a sort of fairly simple, plain, minor method. Okay. Any yeah. questions on that? No. Okay. The next slide I'm going to I'm going to skip actually, because I think it's been quite a heavy morning. So I've just got a couple of pages to show you at the end, and these are just for some general chit chat, other manoeuvres, and this is just more a terminology thing as much as anything. What's that called? Simplest information. Double dodge. A double dodge. We don't know where it is, doesn't matter. It's a double dodge. You can say whether it's up or down though. It's up. Anyone? Up? It's an up dodge. Okay. Just been chatting about them. What's that one? 
triple dodge. Triple dodge. Triple triple dodge. dodge. Okay, and again, that, that happens to be an up, an up triple dodge. Here's yeah. an interesting one. That is, that is a single down dodge. Yeah. I've actually put that one there for a reason, because some, some, some work study engineer once took a, a look at a double dodge, and they thought this is a bit bonkers, because it's a bit like you go, you, you, you're taking a walk to go and see a friend down the street, and there is two shops that you want to pop into to buy something on the way. So you set out from your front door, you go past the first shop to the second shop, to buy whatever you wanted you then come back out of that shop and then come back on yourself to the shop that you first passed to get what you wanted there and then you carry on back to your friend's house going past the shop you've already been in to your friend's house and they thought well that's all a bit bonkers but that's basically what a dodge is why don't you go down the road stop at the first shop first then the second shop and then carry on and if you do that you end up with what are called places and that's exactly what they are because if you look at a dodge you've got let's let's say for example that is a three four dodge you've got two blows in fourths and you've got two blows in thirds so yeah. this work study engineer said well let's do the two blows in fourths first and then we'll do the two blows in thirds and then carry on and that's what places are yeah another analogy phil just going back yeah. to your photograph that you showed us right at the beginning I, i'm just saying this because it might help helen in particular but you showed us the theater and the stairs yeah. so um i was always taught that you know instead of just walking down the stairs from the top to the bottom yeah. a dodge is where you've stepped up one step again so you're That's on your way it, yeah. down and you step back up mm -hmm. um, and places is when you stay on your step when around you other people are moving up and down around you that's it yeah the same basic idea and you always dodge with the same bell is that what you're saying no um only if you're doing only, multiple only in dodges. That particular points but no not at all when, when 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 you are ringing a method when you're ringing a method um you the, your dodge bill will be whoever you meet at that particular point you're right though helen if you're doing a double dodge or a triple dodge you stay dodging with the same bell okay. but later on in the method you might be doing a different piece of work and it's more likely that you'll be doing that with different bells it's no it's no point don't get don't be ringing a method think well i know i'm going to dodge with the fifth because i always dodge with the fifth because you won't okay you know, as you go through a method you will you will dodge with different bells and this is really what the, the the art of rope sites again when it when it comes to learning method ringing it's often taught it's often talked about in terms of learning methods i talk about it in terms of learning rope sites yeah because the two the two are vastly different the two are vastly different but that but that's not what this lecture is about this is purely about say lecture listen to him <laughs> This is purely about getting understanding how we end up with these wiggly lines that we look at. But but mm -hmm. I, I beg you, and I've been begging a lot of people in the guild at the moment, don't become one of these ringers who just looks at blue lines and thinks they know a method. Am, mm -hmm. am I right, Margaret? Yes. Yes. <laughs> of course, always, Phil. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, so that, that's what places are. And you get little things like a point. That is called a point. And when you, when you start looking at things like points, you're straight away, you're into methods that do wrong hunting or a combination yeah. of both. But where, but where that comes in, a point, it comes in with what's called a Stedman. And if you want to see how they fit together, you saw how the Dodgers fit together, didn't you? Mm -hmm. That's what a point and a Stedman do. And it's quite interesting because what it means is, is normally when you're playing hunting, the first bell up to the back is the first bell away from the back. And the second bell up to the back is the second bow. But when you do it this way, the first bell up to the back is the last one to come away. But that's just something you can say you've seen. Don't 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 worry your head about it. That's straightforward plane hunting. And because on the Google, because where I copied it from, it had that wording on there as well. So you can see where it says hunting up and hunting down and the lie and the lead. There is another form of hunting. Anyone tell me what the other form of hunting is? Come on, somebody must know. The other form of hunting. Wrong hunting. Sorry, Alan? Wrong hunting. Mm, that's, yeah, that still can be in a straight line. I was thinking more 
Oh, oh right. Treble Bob. <laughs> which is still a, still a hunting. The, the idea of the word hunt means it is a repeated pattern. It doesn't mean okay. you're going in straight lines necessarily. And what, that, okay. what that shows there is the treble to works like Kent or Cambridge or London and stuff like that. They're, they're a different category of method and the treble does treble bobbing. Now Helen, just for what it's worth, that is treble, hunting, treble bob hunting on six bells. Okay, uh -huh. so straight away, what, what places is that dodge in there? Um, it's going... Um, I don't need the detail, I just need to know what two places is it? Is it first and second? Yeah, one, two, piece of cake. And those are? Uh, three and four. Third three, and four, fourth. correct, and they must be? Fifth and six. Five, six, bingo, that's it. Always talk places. Fifth place, sixth place, yeah. Yeah, five, six. <laughs> People just tend to say five, six places, know what you mean. And yes, okay. and obviously all those ones going up are the up dodgers and all these ones coming down are the down dodgers. Yeah, down to the front, up to yeah. the back. Yeah, and you do get a yeah. few other descriptions of places. You don't need to know about these. You don't need to remember them and you don't need to worry about them. Mm. That's called, cool. you'll come across methods that have Yorkshire places in them. You have methods that are Cambridge places in them. And you don't have to be ringing Cambridge to ring Cambridge places. Other methods have them too. But we're talking about other stuff, but... Somebody will, you'll hear somebody yell, you, you're making Cambridge places, and that's what they mean. They also get Norwich places as well. Okay. Just the last couple of quick yeah. slides. I love this slide, actually, because it shows, I just found this quite by chance, but it shows most things on there that I talk about. And notice it doesn't mention a single bell number, except, I tell a lie, except here. Those are your start positions. So if you want to ring the sixth, you know you start the blue line there. If you're ringing the third, you start there. So Phil, you're throwing well, something new in here. Sorry, Sam? You're throwing something new in here, and that's the calling position letter. You can ignore that. No, I don't want to. Is it's that the, part of place notation, sorry, or is that just um, telling you as a conductor? I mean, is that something you would see in the place notation, or is that... No, it isn't. But I'll tell, seeing as you've asked, I'll tell you what it is. Do you, are you familiar with what wrongs and homes are? Yeah, well, roughly, yeah. Do you know, what a, home, do you know what a home is? Oh, it's telling the conductor where he is or she is in relation to the... A bit more, bit more importantly, let's, let's suppose you're ringing the tenor to Bob Minor. Yeah. Okay. And you've come to the end of a playing course. Mm. What are you doing? Oh, play Bob Minor the end of a playing course uh, you've just done five six down correct that is your home position oh okay right yeah. now then let's suppose you're ringing plain bob minor you've stuck a few bobs in mm -hmm. so when you get back to five your five six down dodge it doesn't come round right but you are still in your home position yeah so at least you know where you are okay yep. that's a home the wrong position is when you're almost home. And by that, I mean a five, six up dodge. Oh, okay. That's the wrong. And you can, and you can conduct a quarter peel of plain Bob minor quite easily by just sticking bobs in wrongs and homes. Okay. So actually you just ring loads of plain courses. You don't actually make any of the bobs or sing singles at all, but it's a very convenient way of knowing where they are. You okay. get to the calling positions as well, but I don't know what they are. I can never remember. So when you uh, say calling position, going up. so calling position is not, you know, it's not telling me the point at which I'm going to make the call. It's telling me which call I'm going to make. I, I think it's I would say where the H is, is is where you actually make the call. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And that depends on what the uh, the actual piece of work you're going to call is. I mean, yeah. uh, that um, uh, Steve Horton gave that talk, didn't he, about uh, yeah. some of the uh, horrendous bobs and singles in some of the doubles methods. Yeah. And you actually have to call the day before you start ringing because it's such a complicated single. You know, yeah. three dodges, okay. then a lie, then whatever. Right, so right, I yeah. think... So you have to just call it one whole blow before the uh, call takes effect. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank What's you. also difficult, seeing as you brought the subject up, is, is, is uh, make is put is is calling stuff with 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 bobs and singles at the half lead. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because you have okay. to call them well in advance because of the treble lying. The treble's not at the front of the row; it's at the back. So right. you're going to do your work before the treble's even struck a blow. So you have mm. to make sure you put the call in plenty early enough. Mm. Okay. That's yeah. Going off. And as it happens, actually, that H is in fact in the wrong place because that is not the home position for the tenor. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a far, it's a far place method. So that isn't actually the home position. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That. Right. One last slide. Tell me anything you like about that. It's minor. It's Correct. the trebles plane hunting throughout. Correct. It's got places um, made in thirds place. Yep. It's yep. got double, oh, sorry, triple dodging on the front. Okay, here's a question, and I expect you all to shout the answer out. Of that triple dodging, at what point in the method is the middle dodge? Half lead. Bingo, well done. Did you all hear that? Yeah. The half lead. It is, it is so important to remember that because people, people forget to count or they think, oh, have I done my three dodges or not? I just count dodge, lead, ha sorry, dodge, half lead, dodge. And it's, it's pretty, pretty foolproof. It's also worth noting as well. Can you also see how because of those three pull dodges, there is nothing else happens on the front in between the treble leading? Yeah. Or to put it another way, because of those bells triple dodging, no one else can get to lead position. Yeah. Thirds is as far as you can go. Does everyone understand that? Is that because firsts and seconds are dodging? Because they're dodging there, they are in the way. They are like forming a barrier. If you think about it, between, between the treble lead here and here, you've actually got a total of 10 rows, okay? And the triple dodge takes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then these two rows here are taken up with the other dodge bell doing his lead before he sh shoots off the front. And this, this is why it can be a bit annoying when people are trying to ring these methods and before you know it, they're trying to gate crash on the front. And I say, no, unless you're doing the three dodges, you cannot be on the front. So don't try. So what are they doing? Well, the two bells on the front? No, the others. The others. Well, as you can see here, they can only basically play and hunt up to fourth, up to, up to third place. Because let's t take the fifth place bell here. Yeah. He gets to there. There's two bells dodging in front, so he, he can't. He, all he can do is make thirds and come back out, or he might do a dodge or something like that. But the point is, you, you can think of the method in two halves. You're either in one, two, or yeah. you're doing hunting on the back. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And it's little, little rule. This is where, to, to be honest, I'd find that actually quite a hard blue line to learn. I just keep an eye open for the treble, and when I end up on the front, just stick around there. And if you're at the back at all, and then when you come down, you'll you'll see you've passed the treble. Well, the treble's behind me, so there must be two bells dodging on the front, even if you can't see them. But you just passed the treble, so that's what must be happening. So thirds is as far as you go. I see. Does that help? Yeah. I love little Bob Mine. It's a cracking little method. Right now, Sandy gave me all the all the all the gen last time. Who else can tell me a bit about this one? Preble's only going to fourth place. Yep. Um, Where do all the dodgers come, Alan? Where do all the dodgers come? Uh, you you're talking. You're talking three, four, and five, six. Believe yes, it. but that. They're all three, four, and five, six, which is pretty standard in most Lead minor end. methods, but where about in the method? Lead end. Some of them come no. in the lead end. Where do, the, where do the rest of them come? Half lead end. Half lead, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do, how do you know when not to dodge in three, four? The treble. You can't there. dodge with the treble. The treble's there. I'll, ex I'll explain that to Helen. 
can you see all these dodgers here, yeah. Helen? It looks quite complicated. It's actually a very easy method to ring. Uh, can you see here, you're dodging in three, four, dodge five, six, up and down. But if you notice, you always dodge when you get to the back, up and down. Can you see yes. that? Yes. But yes. sometimes you think, sometimes I dodge in three, four, and sometimes I don't. And can you, can you see how to, how to know when you do or you don't? Um, you, well, because I think you, you're dodging here, three, four, aren't you? Yeah. You're dodging um, going down, I think, going down, down to the front. I'll, I'll, then, I'll put you out of your misery because I wasn't uh, expecting you. Right. You're having a great stab at it and you probably won't realise it. But you see there, mm -hmm. if, if you want to oh, yes. Dodge, if you wanted yes. to dodge in three, four, your dodge bell would be the treble. Yes. Okay? Yes. But believe you me, the treble is not going to want to dodge with you because it's the hunt bell. So because the treble's not going to dodge, you're not going to dodge. So you just, well, you're just playing hunt in them? So you're just playing hunt through, yeah. So you don't have to think about it. You suddenly get to three, four. You hunt. You come off the back. You get mm -hmm. to three, four, and think, "Oh, the treble's my dodge bell." Well, he can't be the dodge bell. So just keep going. Oh, well, okay. It's like someone says you need to take take the third left down the road. You get to the third left, and it's a no entry sign. You think, "Oh, I can't go down there." So you you just keep going till you get you can go down the next one. Mm -hmm. It's that sort of thing. Here's something a little bit different. There you go. Any offers? And I love Lincolnshire Surprise Major, and it's not one of the core seven anymore. That isn't all the line, by the way. That's only two leads of it. There's another five leads of that. Well, the treble is treble bobbing. Correct. Do you remember me mentioning the Yorkshire places on the previous slide? Yeah, you've got Yorkshire yeah. places and Cambridge You've got Yorkshire places. places there. This is Lincolnshire, but it's got Yorkshire places in it. And can you remember the Cambridge places? Yeah. And I've yet, to, here's something as well. I've yet to find an exception to this, but with Cambridge Places, if you're ringing Cambridge Places in a method, every time you get to that middle dodge, it's always with the treble. That's quite handy because if you can't quite see where you're meant to be, but at least you know you're doing Cambridge Places, you can sort of crash around for a bit here until the treble comes, and then put yourself right. You can just set that, Phil, right. crash around. Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> James once said to me when James was learning about the meaning of life he said he said um, have you ever been to any horrible place have you ever had any really horrible things happen in life I said oh golly yeah loads of things he said where's the darkest place you've ever been to I said seven eight places in Cambridge Maximus <laughs> I hate them I still do <laughs> have you ever tried doing them Sand it's Not like Maximus, being, Royal like being in the middle of a stormy ocean and you can't see the coast I've never rung Maximus. If I, I don't think I have anyway, but Royal. Yeah, you, you're too far off the back and you're too far off the front and you literally just feel you're drowning in the middle of a sea of ropes. But that's the sort of thing you can do. And this is also, particularly when you get to that level, where if, you know, it is essential. Here's, here's a question. You see the Dodgers there? There are five Dodgers there. Have a guess where the middle Dodge is. Uh... Half lead. Yes. <laughs> Half lead dodge. And it just so happens that the bell doing the five pull dodge of the way isn't, isn't in fact on the page. As I say, there's only two leads there. There's another, there's another five chunks of that to go. So, so there you go. Wow, what a morning. I think I've <laughs> talked enough. I'm going to take that screen down now. Phil, I think you've done a great job of much. making this session relevant to all of us, albeit that we're at different stages. We're different so, levels, but that's the thing. Yeah, this, this, this is I found, I'm finding which has not been taught for a few years. Yeah, I found this really great, and I really will, I'm looking forward to seeing some of these worksheets, and I will give them a whirl. Thank you. Yeah, yes, thank the, you. they're Excel spreadsheets, and I've done it slightly the other way around, just so mm -hmm. that you know. I'll. Um, um, and I do remember. Um, you know donkeys years ago that we did used to do perhaps a better job of doing theory and I remember sitting um, 
uh, the dining room table with the guy that actually taught me to handle a bell and uh, sitting there with my graph paper and actually writing stuff out. And it, you know, yeah. I know it was a good foundation for me and yeah. and makes me realise that maybe we don't do enough of that to help. Well, I don't think we do. I don't think we do. I'm just going to do one last little screen share just so that you know what you're going to get. Um, I don't know, where is it there? And you'll send the link to your presentation, will you? I can do, yes. It should, it should end up on the Guild website. Thank you. But the idea with these um, grid examples, can you see this here? Yeah, yeah, we can. What I've done is the other way around, so you'll need to do a little bit of head scratching. But I've just put in the most basic instructions here. And from that, you should be able to fill the grid with numbers. Okay? Yep. I've, I've, I've checked them and I've rechecked them several times. They should work, but I can't guarantee. So if you do have any queries, do get back and let me know. But then once you've got the grid of numbers, see if you can fill the place notation in. And then if you want to, having done all that, get a piece of paper and write the lines out. But this isn't compulsory. This is just if you want to. Thank and you, you might need, to, I think one of them has got an instruction on, you might need to Google what I mean. I certainly think I think, certainly think Helen will. So yeah. again, by all means, use Google. There's nothing wrong with Google. It's a fantastic tool. But don't be one of those ringers that just uses it to find a blue line and nothing else. If we have any questions when we go through it again and these sheets, are we okay to email you? Oh, please do. I would, yes, you must. It's, that is essential. Yeah, it's is that okay? Or, or, you know, I mean, you've got, you've got Claire. You can always go and ask Claire. You know, it's knowing who to ask. That that's the that's the big danger with ringers. There there are some ringers out there who come up with some funny mm -hmm. ideas, um, and I can't quite see the logic in it. Um, but you know, hey ho. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. At that point, I'm certainly going to um, stop the share. I will now stop the recording.